On Friday, Jeffrey Brown brought us a look at a new film, The Old Man and the Gun, featuring veteran actors Sissy Spacek and Robert Redford, who has declared that this will be his last role. Jeff continues the conversation now with a look at Redford's remarkable career on and off the screen. You walk right up, look her in the eye, and you say, ma'am, this is a robbery. And you show her the gun like this. In what he says will be his final role, Robert Redford turns back to the kind of character he so wonderfully played in earlier classic films, the good bad guy. So don't go breaking my heart now, okay? <sighs> Step on it. In The Old Man and the Gun, he's Forrest Tucker, a charming, aging bank robber who just cannot quit. When you're thinking about leaving, when you're thinking about having the, the end of a career in terms of acting, you want to go out on something that's upbeat and fun, fun to do. Now 82, Redford joined us at the Toronto International Film Festival, alongside co-star Sissy Spacek, to talk about their new film and his decision to call it quits. I just felt that I'd been doing it for so long, it was time to maybe exit on a, on a good note, on a positive note. I've been doing it since I was 21. The first project I ever did, to tell you how my beginning was, was a Perry Mason TV show back in 1959. It looks like he put up a little fight. What's that? Looks like hair from a wig. Wow. And the title was The Case of the Tortured Toupee. <laughs> I still don't know what that meant, but anyway, that was my first job. But you remember it went uphill that. from there. You, re you remember that, I mean. How can you forget something like that? <laughs> His first triumph came on Broadway in 1963 in Neil Simon's Barefoot in the Park a role he reprised opposite Jane Fonda in the film adaptation in 1967. Paul, if the honeymoon doesn't work out, let's not get divorced. Let's kill each other. Let's have one of the maids do it. I hear the service here is wonderful. We'll jump. Like hell we will. The real jolt to stardom came two years later as the Sundance Kid, an early version of his charming bad guy persona, opposite Paul Newman's Butch Cassidy. From there, film fans can reel off favorites, among them The Way We Were with Barbara Streisand and The Sting again with Newman, both released in 1973. This is Bob Woodward of the Washington Post. All the President's Men with Dustin Hoffman came in 1976, The Natural in 1984, and many, many more. Recently, All is Lost, a survival at sea drama, and Our Souls at Night teamed once more with Fonda just last year. Can I talk to you about something? Sure. In 1980, Redford also launched a directing career and won an Oscar for it with Ordinary People. Other directorial projects include A River Runs Through It and Quiz Show. Was that part of the test? <laughs> he traces it all to his Southern California childhood. I grew up in a lower working class neighborhood, and so the only entertainment we had, there was no television at that time, it was radio that you would walk to a local theater and see a movie. And so what I remembered was the joy of leaving this life you were forced to lead and go into a, a, a room that was suddenly dark with a lot of people that you knew sitting there with you. And then all the lights would go down, and then something would come on the screen that was fresh and new that took you out of where you were. And I think that made a strong impact on me, the value of that which I think is why I was eventually drawn to film. I don't know how introspective you are in thinking about your life at different times. Did you make a decision that this is the right moment, you've done enough and... Yeah, I don't spend a lot of time thinking back. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about whether it's gonna be right or not for a career. What, what happens is you just feel an impulse and the impulse tells you, this is something I wanna do. You know, you don't spend a lot of time thinking beyond that. It, it just feels... Like, should I, or... Yeah, you, know, you, you, just... you just go forward. Both Redford and his current co-star, Sissy Spacek, saw fame come early. She in the 1976 horror classic, Carrie. If I concentrate hard enough, I can move things. And both have taken pains to make lives outside Hollywood. Spacek and her husband raised their children on a farm in Virginia. After Carrie, it felt like the whole world went... <laughs> <laughs> and then, then it was so unnerving right. uh, that I just needed a place to go and kind of, I call it 
I went to ground. That was important to you? Very important to me, yeah. and to raise my children yeah. in a rural and, uh, environment. I felt the same way about raising a family and not having my life dictated entirely by career choices. Because mm -hmm. exactly. there's another life to lead. And if you, if you submit yourself to only one dimension in your life, like I'm going to be an actor and that's all I'm going to think about, that's all I'm going to do, then your life narrows, narrows down. Are there things you still want to do? One thing's for sure, whatever I do, I, I want to spend more time in nature because that's played such an important role in my life, the value of being in nature and respecting nature and then being a part of it. Outside acting, Redford's most enduring legacy may be his creation of the Sundance Institute in Utah, which began as an environmental effort to preserve land and then became a kind of lab for training and fostering independent filmmakers and home of one of the world's leading film festivals. You know, there are other stories out there to be told and they're not being given a chance. How about starting something that you create a mechanism for people to come and not only develop their stories but then have a place to go that led to the festival. I just want to say this guy has done more for independent film than anybody yeah. that I've ever heard of. Yeah. And he's given young writers a, a, a platform to, in a place to work and, and it's just been great. Well, thank you, Serena. Thank you. Th thank, well, I think, well, thank you for that. I, I think the idea is that if you're lucky enough to have some success, what are you going to do with it? Are you just going to sit there and try to repeat that success? Or are you going to take that success and try to do something else with it? But you're clearly proud of what you create. I am. Robert Redford says he will continue to direct and produce projects. The Old Man and the Gun will be his last film as an actor, unless, like his character, he really can't stop. For the PBS NewsHour, I'm Jeffrey Brown at the Toronto International Film Festival. Maybe he's not really going away.